In this video, I'm going to explain you how Houdini is working a little bit on a global level. So what we see over here is uh, in this program we have like all these top views over here on the windows and they all set to OBJ, 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 OBJ. Now Houdini is a very versatile program. It's a program that allows you to create not only 3D content but do also compositing, uh, do also uh, create sounds, use for example sound to animate. So it's an extremely versatile program and therefore it has like different paradigms where you can work in. And the power for that of the power of that is that Houdini allows you to also make like very strong communication between all these elements. For example, you can have like your compositing tools communicating directly with your geometry uh, and like that uh, do all kinds of very weird things. Things I'm going to show you later on in video lectures. Okay, now first a little bit to give an idea what those paradigms are and what you can do with them. Now we see this OBJ and this is something that you can compare with your Maya scene. So if I'm going to show you what it is, if I press for example on the shelf you see over here with the left mouse button, I can place a cube and I can for example control press sphere and this is going to place an object immediately in the center without me having to drag it around. But again I'm going to change it, let's do that for the torus again, I'll do this with a grid as well and so on. So this is a little bit how you can build up your scene and as you can see right over here we have in the network view we have a set of nodes which are displaying these objects. So I can for example select an object over here by clicking those nodes or I can select objects over here by clicking them directly in the screen. Right over here in this viewing pane uh, this is the parameters view. We can see the values for each one of those selected nodes. For example, if I'm going to select the sphere object, you're going to see the translation values have been changed. So this is the position of the sphere. And you can compare this view a little bit to the attribute view that you have in Maya. The view you see over here, you compare it to uh, the hypergraph that you have in Maya. In this view, uh, that we added, you can compare it to the component editor that you have in Maya. Okay, um, different kind of paradigms. So we have objects, we also have surfaces. They are not displayed right over here because surface operators are just an integral part of the scene. A surface operator is something which is hidden inside of this node and a surface operator uh, are those nodes or those operators that give uh, surface some kind of a dimension. For example, it's a different node which generates the torus over here. Then it is a node to generate this cube. So if we want to see the surface operators, we can select a node over here, press I or double click on it and go inside. Now you're gonna see by default the other objects start to be grayed out. I'm going to hide the grid for now. You see the other objects are grayed out and the one that is active we can see it very sharply over here. This node, and we're now within uh, the box object, is a surface operator. So this means it defines how the object is going to look like. So if I change it to polygon mesh you see it's going to have different properties and I can change all kinds of values right here in the parameter. So for example if I set this to 2 you're gonna see it gives you a different result. So this is one of those things. Now we have all these views over here and these views they are connected. The scene view is not immediately connected to it because uh, some of the paradigms that we see over here just are not be able to be displayed right here. So let's change to a different paradigm. For example to the channels editor. We see everything changes over here and we see nothing right over here. Now if we want to make sure that we can see the channels editor um, and that we have something which is switchable we're going to add a new pane with the plus over here like I said in the last video 
and we're gonna take for example a context view which is the most flexible we can go immediately to the channel editor but the context view is most versatile since this, this viewport is going to follow what's going on so the context view is going to change the view to what there is now we still see that there's a difference we see the scene and we see still we have the channels now the reason for that is in a channel editor we just don't have any chop network a network that we need to explore again just by going inside and now we see this viewport is changing so let me add a note over here uh, this is a bit more technical something I'm going to dis uh, explain to you later how it works but basically you can create a note and if you display it you see what's going on over here so this again is a different kind of context here you can create or adjust animations or you can add or adjust sound as well it's all the same thing in Houdini okay let's go to something else right here images this viewport needs to be updated okay so we see the context view is automatically following let's create something again an image network I'm going to double click to get inside and I'm going to add for example a ramp and as you can see right here like in a compositing tool I'm going to collapse this view that we see more we see right over here UV editing and changing of these controls so this gives you a little bit an idea of what compositing is another one this is the output we saw the objects output again a different viewport this is where you can add renders so you can render with Mantra which is the native render engine of Houdini which is by the way a very very strong render engine something we're going to explore later but you can also render all kinds of different things you can render for example a point cache or you can render geometry so for example with the geometry render you can have like a whole animation of objects so for each frame also things I'm going to go in deeper what do we have here? here particles so we have a particle network if we go right in here you can add for example a source uh, let's see where there are creates and let's start for example with location and if we have like a location we see particles starting to spawn over here so that's also some kind of a network we have channels operators sorry shader operators and right here you can start creating all your shaders something which is looking quite complex on the first sight but is going to be much more clear when we get deeper into that and then we have like fix operators and fix operators are in fact some kind of a scripting language but with nodes that allow you to create all your own functions uh, like that also something in which you're gonna go deeper now there are some other paradigms which are not listed over here but they do exist so let me go back to object so like we have surface operators there's also another one that we can find over here and we can find right here in the managers uh, I don't see it over here dynamics adopt network and the dynamics operator is something in which you can create uh, breakable geometry uh, you can do all kinds of physics effects you can do gas simulations it's also the most used and most powerful thing of Houdini this is where they do most of the visual effects with uh, with this system okay so this gives you a little bit a very rough overview of all these paradigms and now in the next session we're gonna go deeper into surface operators and how those nodes work and also in the object operators I'm going to show some basic uh, things that you should know and how those nodes work.